this is the Italian Ball of 1913, and the strike had now, in December, dragged on for five months. No end in sight. The governor, the president, every major person in America had appealed to the mines, please, just sit down and talk to the unions. The union had actually agreed to let the case be arbitrated. They actually told the governor, we'll do arbitration, and anybody can get cool. We don't care who sits and represented us. Anybody can represent us. Um, the unions were, were, were willing to work with them, and the owners would literally say, we won't arbitrate, we don't talk, no, the unions don't exist. We refuse to recognize the union's right to exist, so we will not participate in anything that falls on. So on Christmas Eve, the Women's Auxiliary of Western Federation Miners decided to hold a party for the children of the strike of miners. Uh, I saw this building here, the upper floor is a meeting hall, lower floor is an A and P on one side, virus C on the other. And you get the upstairs, you go up these stairs here, through these doors, this is telling you all here, but it's actually up there. And maybe 700, 800 people show up, but there's probably 10 children for every adult there. And at the height of the party, somebody runs into the hall and yells, fire, causing panic. And there's a huge stampede to get out of the building. And a pile up on the staircase with 73 or more people die. And that event is, of course, the more famous event from the disaster or from the strike because it's number one, it's 73 people died. Number two, it happened on Christmas Eve. Number three, most of the victims were children. And it all seems so frivolous in that if somebody got on fire in the theater, there's no fire. And so this again puts the strike back in the front pages of, of, of papers all across America. This is the Detroit News front page. Um, it was the front page news of the uh, New York Times. Every other major newspaper in America covered it. And again, you see the story being told two different ways. The English language version, especially the local papers, talked about how, oh, somebody yelled fire at the hall, we have no idea who or why, we'll never be able to figure it out. Um, and, and some newspapers announced that within 24 hours it would never be solved. We could never figure out what happened here. Um, the foreign language newspapers, of course, um, has a slightly different take on it. Uh, I apologize, I should see finished, but I don't. Um, but I, I, I've been told what this says, and um, it's the opposite of what the English language paper is saying. It has to call it murder. And um, they pin the blame for the disaster on a group called the Citizens Alliance, which I haven't mentioned yet. But the Citizens Alliance was a group of people that was formed in December after the Daily Jane killings were a bunch of business owners and people who were pro-business, and people, a lot of them were actually not involved in the strike. They weren't mining people and they weren't union people. They were simply the people caught in the middle. Many of them joined the Citizens Alliance. The Citizens Alliance held their own rallies that were supporting the mines. They were anti-union. And some of the rallies actually got out of control and became violent, much like they were preaching against. They said, well, we're scared of the union violence, yet they would go out and trash some union headquarters somewhere. 